Module 2, Networks and Decision Mathematics. Question 1. For a connected graph with four vertices and four edges, what is the sum of the degrees of the vertices? First of all, we know that in a connected graph, there is an edge between any two vertices. Let's draw the four vertices and then four edges to connect any two vertices. There is a vertex of degree 1, there are two vertices of degree 2, and there is a vertex of degree 3. So the sum is 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3, which is 8. So the answer we are after is option D. Question 2. Which one of the following graphs has an Eulerian circuit? We know that an Eulerian circuit passes through each edge once only, and starts and finishes at the same vertex. It looks like option B satisfies this condition, starts and finishes at the same vertex, and passes through each edge once only. So the answer we are after is option B. Question 3. The sport of basketball has five player positions, center, power forward, small forward, point guard, and shooting guard. Five friends, Ange, Ben, Charlie, Doris, and Esther, play together in a team. The bipartite graph below shows which positions each of the five friends can play. Based on the bipartite graph, which one of the following allocations is not possible? Let's start with option A. Ange plays power forward, Ben plays small forward, Charlie center, Doris point guard, and Esther shooting guard. So, this allocation is possible. Let's check option B. Ange plays power forward, Ben plays small forward, Charlie center, Doris shooting guard, and Esther point guard. So, this allocation is possible as well. Let's check option C. Ange center, Ben small forward, Charlie power forward, Doris point guard, and Esther shooting guard. This allocation is also possible. Let's check option D. Ange center, Ben power forward, Charlie shooting guard, Doris small forward, Esther point guard. So this option is also possible. Let's check option E. Ange center, Ben power forward, Charlie cannot play small forward, Doris, point guard, and Esther, shooting guard. So the allocation in option E is not possible. So the answer we are after is option E. Question 4. Consider the graph below. How many faces does this graph have? First of all, we are going to move the vertex at the top below so the edges do not cross. So we have 1, 2, and 3 faces. So the answer we are after is option A. Question 5. Aisha works as a sales representative. The network below shows the roads that Aisha could use to travel between her clients. Aisha's clients are represented by the vertices labeled A to J. The edges in the network represent the roads and the numbers on the edges show the distances in kilometers between her clients. Aisha needs to travel from client A to client J. The question is asking, using Dijkstra's algorithm, which one of the following statements are true? First of all, let's calculate the shortest path, and that is 6 plus 15 plus 23, which is 44 kilometers. So we've just found the answer, which is option C. Question 6. The vertices of the network below represent nine communication towers. The edges of the graph represent the fiber optic cables that connect the communication towers. The numbers on the edges show the length in kilometers of fiber optic cable between the communication towers. We know that the minimum length of fiber optic cable that is required to connect the nine communication towers is 28 kilometers. The question is asking for what values of M and N the minimum length is not 28 kilometers. 
So let's calculate the minimum spending tree. We are going to start by adding up the smallest numbers. So we have three threes, two fours, and a five, and that equals 22. Since the minimum length is 28, m plus n should be equal to 28 minus 22, which is 6. The only option that doesn't satisfy this condition is option b, because m plus n equals 7. Therefore, the answer to this question is option b. Question 7. A project requires 11 activities, A to K, to be completed. The duration in hours and the immediate predecessors of each activity are shown in the table below. The question is asking to complete this project in the minimum time. What are the activities that cannot be delayed? For this, we need to calculate the earliest start time for these activities and then the latest start time for these activities. The activities that cannot be delayed are the ones where the earliest start time and the latest start time are the same, and that is seven activities. So the answer we are after is option D. Question 8. A company builds caravans. The building project for the Holiday Fund caravan involves 12 activities, A to L. The directed network below shows these activities and their completion times in hours. An updated caravan model, the Sunny Life Caravan, is introduced. The building project for the Sunny Life Caravan is modified from the building project for the Holiday Fun Caravan. Activity D is no longer required and is removed. A new activity, Activity M, is added. Activity M has a duration of 2 hours. It has an earliest start time of 17 hours and the latest start time of 18 hours. The question is asking the minimum completion time for the Sunny Life Caravan compared to the minimum completion time for the Holiday Fun Caravan. First, we are going to calculate the minimum completion time for the Holiday Fun Caravan project. So the minimum completion time for the holiday fund project is 28 hours. Now we are going to calculate the completion time for the second project. We need to take out activity D. We know that the activity M has a duration of two hours with the earliest start time of 17 hours and latest start time of 18 hours. We are now going to calculate the completion time for the second project. Since activity M has an earliest start time of 17 hours, it should start after activities G and H, and it finishes before activity J. So the completion time for the Sunny Life Caravan is 27 hours. So the minimum completion time for the Sunny Life Caravan is 27 hours, which is one hour less than the Holiday Fun Caravan. So the answer we are after is option B.